Y'all, if I'm honest, trusting God has felt a little bit like falling blindfolded from a three or four foot platform into the uncertain arms of human beings. It sounds bad, but it's true. When I was in high school, I remember going to a leadership camp and participating in a trust fall exercise. Now, the purpose of a trust fall is to teach team members that they can rely on one another. This exercise had a part one and a part two. In part one, several people would face each other and hold their hands out like this or their arms out like this and interlock them tightly with no gaps. While they did this, we all took turns putting on a blindfold and falling backwards with our arms crossed like this. Level two was similar to level one. Several participants stood facing one another with interlocked and outstretched arms while a brave soul blindly fell backwards from a platform about three or four feet off the ground. So it's one thing to fall backwards blindfolded with your arms crossed while you have both feet flat on the ground, but it's a completely different situation when you fall from a raised platform. Now, in both situations, the faller says, spotter, ready. Then the catcher says, ready. Then the faller says, falling, and the catcher says, fall on, to let the faller know that they are ready to catch them. Y'all, if I'm honest, trusting God has felt a little bit like falling blindfolded from a three or four foot platform into the uncertain arms of human beings. It sounds bad, but it's true. I had this revelation sometime last year in my quiet time. While writing in my journal, I sensed God was asking me if I trusted him. Initially, I was thinking, what kind of a question is that? I mean, I write for you and I speak for you and I go to church on Sundays. Of course I trust you. But then I started to think about people. Did I trust God with them and scenarios and situations? And I realized that my trust with God was pretty shallow. And I was probably at level one or maybe even level zero. I had to admit to myself that what I was calling trust was really a combination of me attempting to control outcomes and experiencing as a byproduct a degree of peace once I was able to gain a semblance of control. But when I couldn't control the outcome, I realized I had grown comfortable with functioning in the midst, steeped in anxiety. Y'all, this is not trusting God. And so that day during my quiet time, I said out loud, no, no, I don't trust you, but I want to. God, will you help me? I felt so ashamed to admit it. I mean, I've, I've been in church my entire life. This should be easy for me, but it wasn't, and it isn't. The second reality I had to embrace was that when we pray and ask God to help us to trust him, he as the master teacher places us in situations where we lack control and are forced to put our complete and total trust in his hands. It's scary, it's nerve-wracking, but it is necessary. It's a faith walk, especially if you are like me. If you have lived your life with a semblance of religious trust that looks good on Sunday morning, I mean real good, but gets a little shaky during the week when you have to walk that blind trust out. Maybe you are in the midst of a situation that requires you to trust God because you cannot and should not trust yourself to fix the problem in your marriage with your children, on your job, in a relationship with your family, in your mind. When we find ourselves in situations that are beyond our control, God gives us an opportunity to engage in a trust fall exercise with him. Spotter ready? 
He invites us to put our blindfolds on, cross our arms, blindly falling backwards while yelling, falling, believing that he is God enough to catch us. Y'all, when I dug a little bit deeper into my trust issues, I realized my struggle with trusting God was tied to an insecure attachment style. I had recently been researching the different types of attachment styles, which is a psychological term for how our primary caregivers engagement with us as infants can impact our adult relationships. I learned that our family of origin can set us up to either have secure attachments or insecure ones. Mine did. I experienced a difficult relationship with my mom growing up and a non-existent one with my father. Although my mother did the best that she could, I still grew up with a very real fear of rejection and abandonment. Many of us tend to view God through the lens of our biological fathers. As a result, we may sometimes hesitate to place our faith completely in God. We may wonder, well, what if he doesn't keep his promises like my father? What if my circumstances never change? How do I know if God will be a heavenly father to me? How do I know if I can trust him? How do I know if he's trustworthy? Maybe you have found yourself asking similar questions. Y'all, when our trust in God wavers, we can remind ourselves of who he is and his character. For instance, in Numbers 23 and 19, this is what it says. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? We know the answer to that question. If we have identified an insecure attachment style with God, we have to retrain our brains to believe that God is trustworthy and he can be trusted. This is not magic. It's not osmosis and it's definitely not immediate. It requires practice and a relentless persistence to choose to believe what God says about who he is and his character because it is a choice. We have to choose that over what our brain is telling us. With every anxious thought and situation that is beyond our control, we must be willing to remind ourselves, God, I trust you. I trust you in my marriage. I trust you with my kids, in my family, in my mind, in my heart, in my home. I am choosing to trust you every single second of every single day for as long as it takes to transform my insecure attachment style with you into a secure one. Sis, be encouraged and know that I am walking this road out with you. I hope you have been encouraged by this video and the corresponding devotion that I wrote for Proverbs 31 with the same title that is linked below in the description section of this video. If you or someone you know has a father wound, next week I'm going to be sharing some video conversations that I filmed last year in conjunction with the release of my book, Overcoming Father Wounds, that I encourage you to check out too. I want to personally invite you to join me for the debut of those videos next Wednesday. So take care, be blessed, and be encouraged.